Coming up, I want to talk about why companies are starting to move over to Windows 365. We're going to talk about what it is and, and how it benefits you. Here's a quick glimpse of it. As you can see, I'm logged on to this site, windows365.microsoft.com. I can open this up in my browser and use Windows 11 or the latest version of Windows uh, from my browser. There's also apps that you can go full screen. This is cross-platform supported, so I could use Windows on lots of different operating systems and lots of different devices, and uh, even in a mobile environment. It's a really uh, neat technology. Now, this video is in honor of my new Windows 365 course. I just came out with it. If you visit examlabpractice.com courses, I've got it on sale right now at a huge discount, so check that out. I'd now like to spend a moment trying to help you understand what are the key reasons for using Windows 365. Sometimes people might even ask why we care anything about Windows 365. So um, I put together seven key points here that I want to go over with you on why this is such a great solution. The first being accessibility. So when you think about Windows 365, and, and why this is going to help you in your environment and in today's world. And kind of this is, as you can imagine, where the future is going with Microsoft desktops and, and all of that. Um, accessibility plays a big role in this. Basically, you could be anywhere in the world. All you need is a device that can get to the Internet, and you can access your Windows desktop, your applications, your data uh, from anywhere. Okay, you could be doing it from a, a smartphone, a tablet. It could be, it could be Mac. It could be Linux. It doesn't doesn't have to be a Microsoft based uh, device in order to access this uh, your Windows environment. Also, Android being another one. But uh, ultimately, accessibility is a is a big deal. You can be anywhere in the world, access your desktop, access your data, and you're you're good to go. The next would be security. Okay, now when we have our uh, Windows 365 desktops, we as admins have central control over that device. And you think about the, today's world of telecommuting and how a lot of people are, you know, they're working from home, they're working from hotel rooms, or you know, in various places. So you can you can imagine, you know, one of the big problems we've had in the last like 10 years, well, really longer than that, is just the fact that a lot of these devices that users are using are not secure, they're not safe. Is as you might recall, we went from, in the late 90s and early 2000s, from an environment where we, the companies would buy devices like laptops, desktops for, for users, and all that. And we, as admins, had complete control over those devices. Uh, we could centrally control those devices because the company owned them. And then the world has shifted since smartphones came out. And, of course, it's shifted sort of even more when COVID happened in 2020 of of people working from home and wanting to work from their own devices. And this whole BYOD thing started, right? Bring your own device. And it meant that, again, a user could be, um, you know, browsing some of the sketchiest websites on the planet on their, their device. And then the next minute they could be accessing company resources. So it took a lot of our, our control out of our hands because we're no longer in 100% control of those devices. Well, with Windows 365, think about it, the, um, the device is hosted in the cloud, so we have the ability to control it. And we can use what are called zero trust principles, which ultimately means that everything gets authenticated. Everything must get authorized. There's no scenario where... Uh, once a user logs in, they're trusted for the next 90 days or whatever. They're constantly being verified and authenticated. And it's seamless in that they're not constantly getting pop-up messages and things making them re-log in, but it is going through verifications and using what are called security tokens. And if it notices something out of the ordinary, then it can challenge the user. Like, okay, we're going to make you use multi-factor authentication. Something out of the ordinary has happened, and it could require a, a text message to their phone or the Microsoft Authenticator app and, uh, and utilize that. So security, of course, is... A big part of that. The next is scalability and flexibility. 
you have resources on the demand on demand users can be given a certain amount of CPU a certain amount of RAM a certain amount of storage and if we need to increase that we can increase that on demand you, you think about buying a computer for a user it's a, a little harder if they need something more powerful you know to, to upgrade processors and, and RAM and, and have all that just done very quickly well I mean with Windows 365 this can happen extremely fast then you got simplicity and, and ease of management. Again, we as IT people can th can now centrally control these devices. We can very easily have policies and uh, security features in place that's going to be locking things down. We have the ability to deploy these devices very, very easily or provision these devices, as they like to say, very, very easy to our users. Okay, so... Um, not to mention being able to to onboard them into different environments, whether it be the intra ID, formerly known as Azure AD, or whether it be to a Microsoft domain, we've got control of things. It's cost effective. Uh, if you think about buying hundreds or even thousands of machines, um, you're you're talking big time money, depending upon how much memory and processing power and all of that. And then you've got to, of course, upgrade those machines as time goes on. You've got to deal with all the hardware that involves that. The IT people have to deal with all the issues um, that goes along with that. Well, with uh, Windows 365, it is a per user, per month billing model, which essentially means you pay a certain amount of money. You're going to know what that, how much that money is going out per month. And um, as people come and go, you can give licenses over to other users. And this can be a very affordable way to do it. Now, you might say, well, what if these people are, are working in an office? Don't you still need a, a computer for them? Well, you can use thin clients. If you're not familiar with thin clients, you know, they're very small uh, boxes. They don't have to have a lot of memory, a lot of power. They're relatively inexpensive. Uh, and you could place these uh, at users' um, desks. And these thin clients can, uh, you know, the great thing about it is, too, if you're in an environment where um, you have customers that come in, like I like to think about doctor's offices and banks and things like that, um, these thin clients don't know anything. The, the desktop is hosted in the cloud. So if somebody was to literally steal a thin client from the office and, you know, take it back, there's no data on it. So this is another reason why you know it, it plays such a great role as far as security goes. Okay, you have high availability, reliability. Microsoft provides a ton of redundancy when it comes to all of this. So if things go down, um, you have act, uh, you have redundancy. Uh, whereas you know when a computer is sitting at somebody's desk and the hard drive crashes on it or something like that, you're in trouble unless you've got good backups. So we've got lots of high availability, lots of redundancy there. And the last thing is integration with, with uh, Microsoft 365. So, of course, Windows 365 integrates with the Microsoft 365 services, the various Microsoft 365 apps. And this will include all the advanced analytic data that can be collected and auditing and monitoring and security, and then as well as giving ease of use to the various apps that Microsoft 365 has to offer. All right. Well, hopefully this video has helped you understand some of the key reasons for why you should use Windows 365. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that will help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again.